All right, now we go to Tom Bevan, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics. Tom, welcome back. Always great to see you. A lot to get to, but first, it has been quite the week in terms of Republicans throwing their hats into the ring for the 2024 presidential election, including uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and most recently today, former Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, your thoughts on this large field of candidates, which seems to be growing day by day, and what do you think this signals? Well, it's interesting. I mean, unlike eight years ago, when at this point in time there were just as many candidates, if not more, and they were all kind of bunched together, this is a completely different landscape. It's Donald Trump at the top. He's ahead by 30 points. You've got Ron DeSantis in second place at about 22 percent. And then everybody else who's at four and a half percent and below. Uh, you know, Mike Pence is about four percent. Chris Christie's at like one percent. These candidates have gotten in the race Christie in particular, but even Mike Pence attacked Donald Trump today, said he's not fit to be president. I mean, they are determined to take Donald Trump down. Um, and so we'll see. It wasn't possible in 2016. Uh, but again, this is a, a different race. We've Donald Trump is not the new you know, person, uh, the sort of interesting candidate. He's got a history. Um, and so uh, while the dynamic is, is radically different, I think as far as a lot of Republicans in this race are concerned, the mission is the same, which is to try and knock off Donald Trump. Yeah, and meanwhile, on the Democrat side, a scholar and activist Cornell West said he's entering the race as a third-party candidate. Uh, kind of a wild card, but we have seen this thing before. That said, what type of impact do you think this will have on the race, and are you surprised by his announcement? I mean, every cycle you've got a couple of candidates that jump in as sort of, you know, as a third party. Um, Cornell West is doing it via the People's Party. Not going to have any impact on this race whatsoever. I think the more important, more interesting storyline on the Democratic side is Robert F. Kennedy, uh, who continues to generate media attention and buzz. He's making Democrats, some Democrats, nervous, um, continues to focus on things that I think, uh, you know, the, the Democratic establishment has really rallied around and is trying to protect Joe Biden, trying to keep him from facing a significant challenge. Uh, and you've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. polling at about 10 to 15 percent. You've got Marianne Williamson polling at 10 percent. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But again, on the Democratic side, um, you know, Biden with his age issues and other things, uh, he, he's likely the nominee, but uh, there are real concerns. Yeah, and it's interesting, too. Uh, meantime, in D.C., uh, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy is facing backlash from members of his own party, specifically the Freedom Caucus, over the debt deal that he brokered. Tom, how do you see this all playing out? Well, you know, McCarthy said he was kind of surprised by this. The revolt that took place is taking place. I mean, the, the House is effectively paralyzed right now in protest to his uh, deal on the debt ceiling. I think a lot of Republicans saw that as a win, but a lot of of uh, the more conservative members of the House, uh, they said that he promised spending cuts that he did not deliver on, and they want to see him deliver on those. So, uh, you know, M McCarthy has done a pretty good job of managing a very small majority at this point, but he is, he remains, just by virtue of the way that he came into office on tenuous, uh, in, in sort of thin ice. Uh, any one of these uh, members of the Freedom Caucus uh, could call for a motion to vacate. They've threatened that sort of vaguely. They haven't been very upfront about it, but it is always lurking in the background. I think McCarthy's doing his best to manage his circumstances right now and get the House, uh, you know, sort of everybody back singing from the same sheet of music on the Republican side. Yeah, something else I want to touch on. Uh, today, former Attorney General Bill Barr, he clapped back at uh, Maryland Democrat Senator Jamie Raskin, who claimed that a bribery investigation involving President Biden during his days uh, in the Obama White House was shut down by Barr in 2020. Tom, what more do you know about this? Well, I mean, this is significant. I mean, Bill Barr is known as a straight shooter um, and a guy who who was an effective, I mean, Donald Trump doesn't like him anymore, but he was, <laughs> for a long time, he did like him. And I think Republicans, he was a very well-respected guy in Washington, saying that Jamie Raskin, the representative from, uh, Democrat representative from Maryland, effectively lied to the public the other day when he said that this, this uh, investigation was shut down. So that's flatly untrue. Um, and you've also got uh, Rep. Comer, who's the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, has said that basically uh, Raskin has lied too. He's misleading the public about the circumstances and background surrounding this FBI document that alleges a, a bribery uh, claim against Joe Biden. 
uh, back when days off. So I think we're going to learn more about this. I think it's a significant development, and I think this keeps this uh, front and center in the news for the foreseeable future. Tom, before I let you go, what else are you tracking? What's on your radar? So we are currently conducting a poll from Real Clear Opinion Research right now on national security, and we're going to be releasing the results of that uh, next week around the upcoming uh, NATO meeting. And so we'll we'll talk about uh, what Americans see as the as the primary national security threat to the United States. So it'll be some really interesting data coming out on Real Clear Opinion Research next week. All right, I'll leave it right there, Tom. Always great to be with you and get your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy.